All right, so we're moving on to topic seven. This was our trigonometry chapter. Um, number 21, given that cosine of theta is equal to 35 over 37, and theta is between zero and 90 degrees, which of the following are other trigonometric ratios for theta? All right, so when I see cosine of theta, I think about, all right, so that's a right triangle. Where I'm just gonna put theta in one of the angles that's not the right angle. Cosine is the, if you think through so, ka and toa. So remember our trig ratios that we set up, so, ka, toa. Cosine is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So now I know that the adjacent side to my angle is 35 and the hypotenuse is 37. So the adjacent side is this side right here, that's 35. This side is 37. Um, since we know two sides of a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to get our third side. And then we can set up any trig value that we want. We can see which of these we agree with. So. Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You just want to make sure that um, your hypotenuse, that 37, is your side c. So we can say a squared plus 35 squared equals 37 squared. When you solve for a, you're going to get a equals 12. So to solve, you would square this, square this, you would subtract that from both sides. A squared would equal 144, then you square root both sides. Okay, now that we have a complete triangle, let's see if we agree with any of these. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse. So is the opposite side 12 and the hypotenuse 37? Maybe we can even um, get more detailed and fill these in. So in our triangle, that 37 is our hypotenuse. The 35 we said was the adjacent, and that 12 is the opposite side. So is the opposite side 12? Yes, it is. Is the hypotenuse 37? It is. So guess what? We like this answer. Um, it says, which of the following? So there might be more than one. So let's just keep going. Um, is sine of theta equal to 12 over 35? Well, no, because we just said sine of theta was 12 over 37. So we're not even going to think about that any further. Now we have some of our reciprocal trig functions, cosecant and cotangent. So cosecant, we want to remember, is the reciprocal of our sine function. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. So is the hypotenuse 37? It is. Is the opposite side 35? And the opposite side is 12. So nope, this is not true. Cotangent is the reciprocal trig function for tangent. Because tangent is opposite over adjacent, cotangent will be adjacent over opposite. So, oops. There we go, I accidentally erased that. So is the adjacent side 35? The adjacent side is 35, it is. Is the opposite side 12? The opposite side is 12. So this one also is correct. So we had two correct answers on this one, A and D. Maybe they should have said select all that apply versus making it look like a multiple choice question. All right, so next we have Number 22, the sun is shining and creates a 27 degree angle to the ground from Eliza's head, casting a 120 inch shadow when she is standing. How tall is Eliza? So why don't we start by drawing this out. Here's Eliza. She's got this triangle, the sun is shining. So the sun is up here, shining away. And there's kind of the right triangle we're looking at. So it says that the sun is creates a 27 degree angle to the ground from Eliza's head. So that's a 27 degree angle to the ground. So that 27 degrees is going to come down here 
with where it meets the ground. Um, we have a 120 inch shadow. So shadows are along the ground. So that 120 inches is right there. How tall is Eliza? So I'm gonna go ahead and put an X over here for how tall she is. This is her height. So we have a triangle. We need to find one side of our triangle. If we had two sides of a right triangle, Pythagorean theorem would work great. Since we don't, we're gonna use a trig equation. So in this triangle, we have our 27 degree. Let's label our sides according to this angle. So this is the hypotenuse, which we're not gonna use because we don't know anything about it. But this side over here, that X, that's your opposite side. And the 120 is your adjacent side. So if we think through our trig function, sine, cosine, tangent, so, ka, toa, which one uses the opposite and the adjacent side? And that's our tangent function. Our tangent function is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So we're gonna set up a trig function. Actually, it's gonna be a trig equation. So we know to use the tangent function. So it's tangent of our angle. Our angle is 27 degrees. So tangent of 27 degrees is equal to the trig ratio, the opposite over the adjacent side, x over 120. Now, when we solve these back in this unit, um, you might remember that we did a lot of, hey, let's put this over one so that we can cross multiply and get out of these fractions. So we multiply our cross products, one times x is x. We set it equal to the other cross product Tangent of 27 times 120. I like to put that 120 out front so I don't get confused and think that I'm taking the tangent of that. Now I have something that we can type into the calculator. Friendly reminder, this is a degree measure. Um, your calculator resets to radians. So you'll have to go into your mode and change to degrees before you type that in. But when you type that in, we get that Eliza is about 61.14 inches tall. All right, number 30. Find the exact value of tangent of 30. and says, use a calculator check, but you most, must show work on how you found your answer. So when we had problems like this, we said, all right, tangent of 30 degrees, why don't we draw a 30 degree angle. We'll just put it right into a coordinate plane. So 30 degrees from our initial side over here, 30 degrees is about there. There's 30 degrees. Then if you remember, we would always connect that to the X axis and work with a right triangle. Um, this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle special right triangle, and because we're in a coordinate plane, do you remember how we would borrow from the unit circle and we would use that hypotenuse of one? So we know the hypotenuse is one and we know we have a 30, 60, 90. So let's go through the relationships between our sides. The short leg is opposite your 30 degrees. So here's our 30 degrees. Here's the short leg of your triangle. The short leg of your triangle is always half of your hypotenuse. So if your hypotenuse is one, the short leg will be half of that or one half. The long leg of your triangle is always whatever the short leg is multiplied by a root three. So if we take that short leg one half and multiply it by a root three, we end up with a root three over two. So we are in a coordinate plane. So let's just um, check our signs. From the origin, if we go to the right, root three over two, that should be positive. If we go up one half units, that should be positive. And the hypotenuse is always positive. As soon as our angle lands in other quadrants, you're gonna have some negative sides, um, negative legs of your triangle. So you just wanna always double check that. All right, so in this triangle, everything is in reference to this 30 degrees. We have our hypotenuse of one. We have the opposite side of one half and the adjacent side of root three over two. And they're asking us to find the tangent of 30 degrees.
So tangent of 30, we're going to take the opposite side, which is 1 half, put it over the adjacent side, which is root 3 over 2. So remember, we just did tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Now, this is our answer, but we're not going to leave it like that. Let's see if we can simplify that. Uh, when we have, when we are dividing with fractions, we're just going to multiply, we're going to keep the top fraction the same, so 1 half, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, 2 over root 3. If we multiply straight across, we have a 2 over a 2 root 3. These 2's reduce to 1, leaving us with that root 3 stays in the denominator, but we're left with a 1 on top in the numerator. So this 1 half divided by a root 3 over 2, so far is simplifying to 1 over root 3, but we have an issue with this also. We cannot leave a root 3 in the denominator, so we're going to rationalize this by multiplying the numerator and denominator by root 3 over 3. 1 times root 3 is root 3. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9, which is 3. So tangent of 30 is equal to root 3 over 3. All right, number 24, an angle has a reference angle of 37 degrees and its terminal side lies in quadrant two. What is one positive and one negative coterminal angle for this reference angle? So let's just think about what's happening. We have a coordinate plane. We have an angle that lies in quadrant two with a reference angle of 37 degrees. So remember, we reference the x-axis. So what this means is that our angle is 37, it's in the second quadrant, so it's over here, but it's 37 degrees off of the x-axis. So I'm going to go 37 degrees this way, I'm going to kind of approximate, and there is the angle. So that's what a reference angle looks like in quadrant two. So we need one positive and one negative coterminal angle. So one positive angle could be just the angle that starts on our initial side and comes all the way over to here. So to get this angle, I know it's going to be between 90 and 180. And to figure out what this is, let's work with this 180 degrees right here. If we were to go all the way to 180 degrees, but then take out that 37 degrees, we would be left with that angle right there. So we can take 180, subtract 37, and we get 143 degrees. So that is a positive angle that is coterminal. So coterminal, I guess we didn't even talk about what that means. A coterminal angle is an angle that shares the terminal side. So any angle that lands right here is coterminal. There is an infinite number of coterminal angles. You know, we just went 143 degrees to get right here. Well, I could go another rotation around. I could add on 360 to that 143, and there's another coterminal angle. I could add on 360 again. I've got another one. Add on another one. Add on another 360, and I've got another one. So. Um, Coterminal angles, angles that share a terminal side. All right, so how about a negative coterminal angle? So a negative angle, if you remember, starts here with our initial side, but instead of going up, it's actually going to go down. It just has a different rotation. So we could go down and land here. So that's going to be negative. Now, if we go down all the way over here, that's negative 180. And then we go another 37 degrees. So negative 180 and another 37 degrees. Um, we already know it's going to be negative. But if we take 180 and we add that 37, we are going to get 217. So that's a negative 217 degrees that has us land in that same spot. So negative 217 degrees is a negative coterminal angle. And then how could we get more? If we do a negative 217, I could subtract 360 to land here again, figure out that angle. Subtract 360, land there again, I could figure out that angle. Um, so 
Again, there are an infinite number of positive and negative coterminal angles. We often just give the easiest ones to find without worrying about adding or subtracting 360 multiple times. All right, number 25, find the remaining five trig functions of if cosecant of theta There we go. <laughs> Don't know how I did that. If cosecant of theta is equal to negative 13 over 5 in the third quadrant. Okay, so they just told us that we're in a coordinate plane. We're in the third quadrant, so we have some angle over here in the third quadrant. We are going to connect that to the x-axis. Theta is going to be right there. We don't know what the angle is, um, but we do know two sides of this triangle. So cosecant, remember cosecant is the reciprocal of our sine function. Sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. So the reciprocal of opposite over hypotenuse is hypotenuse over the opposite. So if we come over here to our triangle, we know that we have the hypotenuse. This is gonna be the opposite side. This is gonna be the adjacent side. So I had a previous problem where I talked about um, how the hypotenuse is always gonna be a positive number um, in this triangle. And your legs could be positive or negative depending on what quadrant you're in. So this fraction right here kind of looks like the hypotenuse is negative. So just remember that if you have a negative fraction, negative 13 over five is a negative value, you can get that same negative value by doing a 13 over negative five. So that's the way we wanna think about it. We can see that, all right, so our hypotenuse is 13 and the opposite side is negative five. Um, we can do Pythagorean theorem to get our missing side. Maybe we recognize it as a triple, five, 12, 13. So that's one I know. So I'm gonna save myself the work. But if you weren't sure about that, you could do Pythagorean theorem. Um, now let's check the signs of this triangle. We know hypotenuse is positive. From the origin, if we move to the left 12 units, this 12 will be negative. And if we go down five units, that five will be negative, which we already said it was. So this is the triangle we're gonna use to find the remaining five trig functions. Well, I guess first, maybe we don't even need the if we knew cosecant is this, then we can just find the reciprocal of this to find sine. But we'll just go through our triangle over here. So let's see, sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse, negative 5 over 13. Cosine of theta is so cot adjacent over hypotenuse. So our adjacent side is negative 12. Hypotenuse is 13. Tangent, so tangent is opposite over adjacent. So tangent of theta is equal to um, opposite negative 5 over adjacent negative 12. Um, negative 5 over negative 12 does come out to a positive 5 12. All right, so now let's go ahead and find our reciprocal functions. So reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Well, they already told us that, negative 13 fifths. Reciprocal function for cosine is secant of theta. So that's gonna be a negative 13 over 12. And then the reciprocal for tangent is cotangent of theta, which will be 12 over five. And those are the six trig functions. All right, find the exact value of cotangent of 60 degrees. So again, we can just think about a 60 degree angle in um, a quadrant or in a coordinate plane. 60 degrees is gonna be about there. We can connect it to the X axis so that we have a right triangle. That's a 60 degree angle right there. We can borrow from the unit circle and use that hypotenuse of one. Um, this is going to be 30 degrees up here. And now let's use our relationships 
for 30, 60, 90, the relationships of our sides. So opposite the 30 is the short leg. The short leg is half of the hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is one, the short leg is one half. The long leg is the short leg times the root three. So one half times root three is root three over two. Now let's double check our signs. If we're at the origin and we go to the right, that should be a positive one half. If we go up, that's gonna be a positive and hypotenuse is always positive. So cotangent of 60 degrees is the reciprocal of tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. Uh, the opposite side from our 60 degrees is root three over two. The adjacent is one half. So cotangent of 60 is equal to, we're gonna do the reciprocal of this. So adjacent, which is one half over the opposite side, which is root three over two. All right, well, we're not gonna leave this mess right here. Let's clean up that fraction. When you're dividing fractions, go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. Two over root three. I feel like we did this in another problem. That gives us two over two root three. Two divided by two is one. So we're left with a one over root three. And then we're gonna rationalize that. We're not gonna leave that root three in the denominator. So we multiply root three um, in the numerator and denominator and we get cotangent of 60 degrees is equal to a root three over square root of three times square root of three is square root of nine, which is three. All right, last problem on this page. The sun is shining and creates a 22 degree angle to the ground from Elmer's head, which is 72 inches from the ground when he is standing. How long is Elmer's shadow? All right, so here's Elmer. He's standing on the ground. He's a certain height and we've got a right triangle. So they told us that there's a 22 degree angle to the ground. So we've got 22 degrees with the ground. Elmer's head is 72 inches from the ground. So I know that this side of our triangle is 72 inches and they wanna know how long is the shadow. So the shadow is this side of our triangle along the ground. So we have, we know one side of our triangle and we're trying to find the other side of our triangle. Um, we can't use Pythagorean theorem because we don't know two sides of a right triangle. So we're gonna use a trig equation. Um, we know our 22 degrees, so let's figure out what size we have. This is our hypotenuse. We're not gonna use the hypotenuse because we don't need it and they didn't give it to us. This is the opposite side over here. So we're gonna use the opposite side. And then this is the adjacent side. So what we wanna think about is which trig function, sine, cosine, or tangent, uses the opposite and the adjacent sides. So that's gonna be, if you think through so, ka, toa, tangent uses the opposite and the adjacent sides. So we're gonna use the tangent function to write a trig equation. So we're gonna say tangent of our 22 degrees is equal to that trig ratio of the opposite 72 over the adjacent x. And we're gonna solve this equation. So when we solve these equations, remember we like to put this over one so we can just cross multiply. You guys have been doing that for a long time. When we cross multiply, we have tangent of 22 times x. I'm gonna put the x out in front of the tangent of 22, just so I don't think I'm trying to take the tangent of the x also. We set that equal to the other cross product, one times 72. So remember, when you cross multiply, the goal is to get out of the fractions. So at this point, I shouldn't have any fractions. Now to solve for x, x is being multiplied by a tangent of 22. So why don't we go ahead and divide by tangent of 22. Tangent of 22 divided by tangent of 22 is one. So we get x equals, and now this is something we can type into our calculator. One thing you wanna remember is that angle is in degrees and your calculator resets to radian measure. So you'll wanna go in and change your um, mode to 
degree mode. If you leave it in radian mode, you'll get a wrong answer. So you just have to be aware of that. 72 divided by tangent of 22 in degree mode is, oops, 180 inches. So that is how long Elmer's shadow is.